All right, hi everyone. We're looking at the last section of our uh, right triangle unit, and we're gonna be looking at angles of elevation and depression. Now, angles of elevation and depression uh, use the trigonometry ratios that we've already been working with, such as sine, cosine, and tangent, and also it uses their inverses. So let's see exactly what happens when we look at angle of elevation and depression. Now, the first one, elevation, these are the angles created when you start from a horizontal line of sight So for a horizontal line of sight, imagine you're just standing still and you're looking straight across. To make this an angle of elevation, you then, from looking straight across, change to look straight up. Or more specifically, just looking upwards. So the angle of elevation is the, at the amount uh, that your head raises, that angle that you have to rotate your neck, rotate your head to look up at something. So that is your angle of elevation. So just remember elevators go up, escalators go up, elevation, like the elevation of a mountain is how high it is. So again, elevation, you're from horizontally looking up. Now, angle of depression is the opposite. We start from, again, you start at the same idea, start from a horizontal line of sight. And then you change to looking downwards at something. So let's see how these work when you actually have uh, real pictures here. All right, so we've got two people going on here, one that's kind of high up. And again, notice their head is tilted down. So they are actually looking down at something. So their horizontal line of sight, again, is from where they are looking. So is straight across. And from that line of sight, they tilt their head downwards and they are looking down at something creating that angle of depression. Now, the same idea is true for uh, when you look upwards. So again, we have that horizontal line of sight. And then you rotate your head to look up at something. What is that angle that you have to raise your head to look up? and see whatever it is you're looking at, okay? Now, one thing I wanna mention when you are using angles of elevation and depression, they are in fact, if you imagine this as two triangles, these angles of depression and angles of elevation are in fact congruent to each other because as a whole picture here, we've created a rectangle and those opposite corners are gonna be equal because rectangles are made from two parallel lines and transversals. So when we talked about parallel lines and transversals, we discovered that when they're in opposite corners like that, they are congruent uh, because again, they are alternate interior angles. So we wanna make sure we remember that, that alternate interior angles are still congruent. So the angle of depression in the top triangle is exactly the same as the angle of elevation in the bottom. Those two angles are in fact, again, congruent. They will have the same measure. So depending on where the information is in those particular triangles, 
uh, you might need to move your angle of depression down to the elevation corner or vice versa. So we'll see some examples of uh, when that might happen in just a second. So let's try some, some, some examples here. Example one, the angle of elevation from point A, which is at the top of a hill, is 49 degrees. All right, so we have point A. And that could be where maybe a person is standing. They are looking up at the top of a hill. So there's our hill. And they say this angle, so let's get that horizontal line of sight here, is 49 degrees. If point A is exactly 400 feet from the base of this hill, how high is the hill? So we're trying to figure out how tall is this hilltop? So that would be where my X is. Now we have everything we need. We can label this triangle. So remember, ground going straight up makes our 90. So across from that 90 is our hypotenuse. Across from our acute angle is the opposite. Whatever is right next to it is the adjacent. So we have opposite and adjacent in this picture. All right, so let's get our trig ratio going. Opposite and adjacent again is tangent. So tangent of our angle, which is 49 degrees is equal to opposite X over adjacent 400. All right, and like before we said we could cross multiply these. If I put that over one, so x times 1 is just a 1. I'm sorry, just an x, sorry. Just a 1x is what my brain was thinking. So 1 times x, just an x, is equal to, and we go the other way, 400 times the tangent of 49 degrees. And guys, we can go straight to putting this in our calculator. So let's see what we get. All right, guys, so we had 400 times the tangent of, let me go back and double check my angle, 49 degrees. And we have about 460.1. So we'll round this to about 460. Whoops, sorry, hit the button too many times. All right, so our X is about 460 and we were in feet. And there's our final. So let's try the next one, example two. All right, so we have an, from the top of a 120 foot high tower. So let's get that tower. All right, so there's the tower and it is 120 feet tall. An air traffic controller observes an airplane on the runway. So there is a person in this tower and they see an airplane on the runway. So there is my plane. I can't draw a plane, guys, so you have to live with a dot. At an angle of depression. So if he looks straight out horizontally, that angle of depression is 19 degrees. How far from the base of the tower is that airplane? So my X is down along the bottom here and my 120 is the left side. But this is where I said sometimes the angle of depression is exactly the same as the angle of elevation in the other triangle because my 120, the X and the 19 degrees are not in the same figure. So I'm going to switch my 19 degrees down to the bottom triangle and now I have an everything in the same side and I can solve this. All right, so I have the 90, the ground to my tower, which means that third side there is my hypotenuse. Across from the 19 degrees is the opposite side, making the last side right next to it the adjacent. So we're using tangent again, because we have opposite and adjacent. 
So let's see what we get. So tangent of 19 degrees is the opposite 120 over adjacent, which is x. <clears throat> so let's cross multiply this. Let's put this over one. One times 120, 120. Tangent 19 times x. So again, we put the trig last. All right, we'll have to now divide out that tangent of 19 from both sides. And let's see what we get for our final answer. So 120 over tan 19. So 120 divided by the tangent of 19 is about 348.5. I'm gonna round this up to the nearest whole number. So 349. So X is about 349 feet away. In this case, our plane. Let's try some more. Two more examples. All right, example three. A ski run is 1,000 yards long with a vertical drop of 208. Now, a ski run is what carries the skiers up to the top of the hill. So if we have our person starting at the bottom of the hill, they're gonna go all the way up that ski run, so 1,000 yards. And it has a vertical drop of 208 yards. Find the angle of depression from the top of the ski run to the bottom. All right, so again, all our information is technically in this bottom triangle. Angle of depression starts high and we have to look low. So again, this is where we can move it into the bottom triangle because the angle of depression from the top triangle is the same as the elevation from the bottom. So my X is really down below. All right, so let's label this triangle. There's the 90 from the line of sight to straight vertical drop. So the 1000 is my hypotenuse. Across from the acute angle is opposite. So if you have opposite and hypotenuse, this is sine. So we have sine, and again, we need the angle this time, so this is inverse with the little negative one. And instead of the angle in parentheses, we put your ratio. Opposite on top, 208, over the hypotenuse, 1,000. And let's see what we get. Let's see what that missing angle is. That is our x. So sine inverse 208 over 1,000. So remember function button, sine inverse back to main. 208 divided by 1,000. So there we go. We have about a 12 degree angle of depression. So X is about 12 degrees for our angle. So last one. Example four, your cat is trapped on a tree branch six and a half meters above the ground. All right, so there is the tree, there's your branch. And there's your cat, don't judge my cat. This cat is 6.5 meters above the ground. So this cat is 6.5 meters up. Your ladder is only 6.7 meters long. All right, what is the angle of elevation the ladder makes with the ground? So this time, everything we need is in the picture. Let's see what we have here. All right, so we have our 90 degrees and across from that is the hypotenuse. 
across from the angle they give you is opposite. So this is another sign. So sign inverse, because we're looking for the angle of opposite 6.5 over hypotenuse 6.7 is our angle of elevation. So let's see what we get when we put this into the calculator. So sine inverse, so fun, go back to function, sine inverse main, 6.5 divided by 6.7. Make sure I have one right, yes. So we have about 75.9. So this will round up to the nearest whole angle of 76. So our X, our angle of elevation is about 76 degrees. And now it's done. All right, guys. So again, with angle of elevation and depression, some things to take away to remember. The angle of elevation in one triangle, like it was here, could easily be the angle of depression if we needed the other triangle there, if I needed the triangle on top. All right, a lot of these you're going to have to draw your own pictures. Uh, so just make sure we know that gra the ground always makes a 90 degrees when going straight up. Uh, practice out drawing these pictures, guys. I know you can do it, uh, but please, if you get stuck on the pictures and where your pieces go, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me, guys. Uh, I'm here to help you all. But I hope you all have a great day.